Good, wholesome family fun is hard to find these days. Hello, I'm Donna Budrick on WLTX. Make plans now to spend a fun-filled day with your family at the annual food festival, Columbia State Farmers Market on June the 8th. We planned activities and entertainment for all age groups. Our stage will highlight local dance groups and singers. We'll also have a variety of craft exhibits for your enjoyment. Come on out on Saturday, June the 8th for a celebration called God Bless the Food and the Farmer. Building the tallest tower with maximum power to better serve you. WLTX, Columbia. It's time now to visit the wonderful world of the great outdoors with the Southern Sportsman, Frank White. Today's show is brought to you in part by House Autry, proven cornmeal and flour products. By Happy Jack, manufacturer of the all-new 3X Flea Collar. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about trying to get my hand in there to give you an idea, although that's uh, not a very good idea. I'll take my hand out of there. Uh, but this is known as the jumbo size, and this is the prime. There are two other sizes. There's a whale size, which is larger than this, and there's the hotel size, which is smaller than the prime. But generally, soft crabs <coughs> are graded out into four different sizes, and that's the way you would buy them, whether you were buying them for a restaurant or buying them to have at home or whatever. Now, i got a couple of my favorite recipes here. When you cook a soft crab or crab meat of any kind, you don't want to overdo it. You want to cook it uh, as simply and as plain as you can. There's none of these fancy French type of recipes where you put on all the sauces and all that sort of stuff. And when I saute mine at home, and I like them, I think sauteed better than any other way, I take a shaker bag with seasoned flour in it. That is, it's got salt and pepper in it. And I add to that a little baking powder, just about a half a teaspoon to, uh, I've got about a half a cup of seasoning in here, but about a half a teaspoon of baking powder to go into my shaker bag, and I'll shake it up just to mix it. And I don't know why, but that seems to make the batter hold on a little more when you're sauteing these crabs, and uh, they seem to fry a little bit better. Now, I've got some already dressed here, and in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how we dress one. I'm gonna dress this uh, little female prime that I have here up on the table, <coughs> but in the meantime, I'm trying to get some heat in here. In the frying pan, I have half oil, and half butter, a mixture of half and half. And the reason for that is uh, I like the butter for the seasoning, but the oil uh, permits you to get the, uh, the butter a lot hotter before it starts to burn and turn brown. And so I put a little oil in there. That's just sort of a, a temperature increaser, or whatever you would call it, but it helps keep it from burning and you can get it faster. Now you notice buns or muffins there, and when I'm cooking them like this, I like them in a sandwich. I'll take an English muffin or just a hamburger bun and put butter on it and toast it and fry these up as I'm gonna do right here. And I don't think that's quite got hot enough yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. It'll get hot in just a minute. In a soft crab, of course you dress them, but otherwise you eat all of them. Eat everything that's there. Oh yes, it's beginning to get hot now. And I just saute them two or three, uh, four minutes on a side, depending on what size they are. The little hotel is only about two minutes on the side. These primes, uh, about three or three and a half minutes on each side. I'll flip them one time. Now, another way I like, if I can get the flour off my hands, another way I like is to broil them. And I've got one of the big uh, jumbos here. And to him, I've got some melted butter, and it's over here in, uh, in the oven. And I'm going to turn the oven up to about 375 degrees. Now he's in a little buttered pan, and I've got some regular crab meat here. And I just pull his flap back, the top of his shell back, and stuff him with crab meat, like this. A tablespoon or two tablespoons, depending on the size of the crab you have, how much you can get in there, and put his top back on and put a little uh, just drizzle butter, melted butter over him like this. Salt and pepper him just very lightly. And then put him in the oven up high on the broiler at about uh, 400 degrees and just let him uh, broil there uh, not too long. Again, kind of keep an eye on him. He'll turn red, but you want him to go uh, there, broiling maybe seven or eight minutes, and then check it. And uh, after you cook one, you want them nice and soft and tender and moist. Now I'm gonna show you right quick how to clean one while these are sauteing over here. And I'm gonna take the little female, and what you do is, she can get an overhead shot, peel the apron off, 
like this. Now, I do this under faucet uh, running water at home, but I'd have to turn my back to you, and you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. Take a pair of scissors, and uh, this doesn't hurt him a bit because uh, that's quick and simple and easy, but just clip off the face parts like this and then clean out the inside. Now, a lot of people just go ahead and fry these things whole, but I like mine cleaned. Uh, he's got some insides in there, and uh, there's a lot of fat in there too, but I get that out because it's the lean, sweet meat that I'm after. So clean out what's in the inside here like this. And also one more thing, and that's just, these are the gills. Uh, some people call them the dead man. Uh, some people call them the fingers, but take them off on both sides. But you cook the feet and the shell and everything on a soft crab. It's all soft, and you cook it and eat it. Uh, but I do clean mine, and I clean them pretty good inside to get everything in there out like this. And now he's ready to go. There she is upside down. And there's the other side with the shell on. And if you want to stuff it, fine, you can. But I don't stuff it when I'm frying them. These need turning. I'm going to turn them right quick. Uh, they've cooked just about long enough. Flip them over. That one popped at me. I don't think he appreciated the way I'm doing him. Turn him over like this. And uh, you serve them like this on a platter with a salad, uh, whatever you might want to serve. Uh, but I like them. Take about two of these and put it in a big bun or in an English muffin that's been toasted and make a crab sandwich with some tartar sauce on it. Instead of using mayonnaise or ketchup or anything like that, I like tartar sauce in my sandwich. But that's a question of taste. And uh, you can use whatever you like. But anyway, uh, that's, a, that's how I do crabs when I have them at home. And I eat them a lot. And I'm going to come back here in a minute and show you how they gather them, where they come from, and how they bring them to market after these very important messages. The, the name of this book is coming to you very highly. Uh, I think you will enjoy it very much. It was very popular when it first came out. A friend of mine, John Green at WRL, as a matter of fact, recommended this book to me some time ago. I've had this copy several years. Uh, and I've read it, but I've always been fascinated with crabs, primarily because they are so good to eat. I just really do love to eat them. But I like to see the guys that go out and make a living. I've got some very good friends that are watermen, and I'm going to take you right now up to Saxis, Virginia, which at this time of year is a hectic, frantic place. The guys are going seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to get these shedding crabs out. Now, this is the trap. And we are being shown it by young Lee Miles of uh, Miles Brothers Crab House there in Saxis. Lee works for his father and his uncle, Aubrey and Ralph Miles. And this is what the floats look like. Now, once upon a time, they had uh, screens, uh, sort of float things that looked like this, but had screen bottoms that they just floated in the bay itself. But somebody came up with this idea. They said, why don't we put it up where we can walk around it, have it up at waist level, and we can handle them, and just we, what we'll do is get us a pump, and we'll just pump fresh water through there. Now, the guy brings them in from the traps in the morning, and they bring them in, bring them in constantly. This time of year, a guy running a, a line of crab pots will have anywhere from 300 to 400 or maybe even more traps, and he's running them constantly. This is the time of year that they shed a moat. Now, these have already shed, but what they bring in is peelers. And the guys you're looking at, this is Ralph Miles that you see here, and the first man that you saw after Lee was Aubrey Miles. I'll show you again here in a minute. But these guys are bringing these crabs in, and they've got to be handled fast. They've got to be counted. Now, he's looking at the little paddle where they swim, and when the crab gets to peel, uh, starts toward the phase of peeling, that will start to change color, and it varies from pink to bright red. Now, when it's bright red, the crab is going to shed in just a few hours. And they are so vulnerable, they're so tender and so soft that they keep them in a separate place so that the others won't eat them. Now, that's a shell floating there that's already been shed out of. The shell of a crab is his skeleton. And when he grows, he's got to get out of there. It's kind of like a man putting on a suit of armor and then gaining 100 pounds. All of a sudden, he's got to back out of that thing. And that's what these crabs are doing. They get big to the point where they literally start to burst open. And then they have to wiggle out of that shell, claws, leg covering, and everything, everything that's on the outside. Now, that on the left, the dark one, has come out of that shell, that light-colored shell that you see there on the right. That's a crab backing out of there. 
and it must be a tight fit just before they come out because once they get out and get all the wrinkles out, they're an inch larger on the average than the shell itself. And so it must be very tight in there for a few days before he finally is able to pop that thing open and back out of it. But there he is. Uh, this, these are live crabs. They're shedding. And sometimes the guys give him a little help. Uh, that's a live crab there, and he's pulling off the leg covering. But in just a few hours, they'll start to harden again. And it is at this stage, the soft stage, that we get soft shell crabs. But see, they're backing out of that skeleton. That'll give you an idea. One's come out of there already. Here we are again. The one on the top is the live shedding crab, and the other one was the case. And then they got to pack them, send them off to market. Now, they'll have orders for the fresh ones, and they'll pack them alive and soft in crates and ship them right out. See how soft and tender all these are. I'm just poking at them there while I'm taking their picture. But they are extremely vulnerable at this stage. They are so vulnerable, in fact, that you don't want any hard crabs in there. The hard crabs will kill the soft crabs. They'll bite them because they're in a very crowded condition and a crab has a short temper anyway. But anyway, this is Aubrey and Ralph and Lee Miles. And as I say, from sometime in May, all throughout the summer, they'll be at the crab house and they will be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They go home and sleep a little bit in shifts, but somebody's got to come down and check them. And they've got to be what's called fished up, which means they've got to be gathered up, and then they've got to be graded. Now, the ones they don't have the orders for, they go ahead and clean right there at the packing house and freeze them in boxes. They wrap them and freeze them. And the frozen ones are almost as good, not quite, but the frozen ones are almost as good uh, as the fresh ones. And of course, in the restaurant, when we can't get the fresh ones, certain seasons of the year, uh, we serve the frozen ones because people like them, but these ladies are cleaning them, and she's doing what I showed you a while ago, cutting off the face and uh, the tail apron and then cleaning them up. They wrap them up individually, and then again, they're graded, sorted out, and put in those boxes. But to me, it's a fascinating uh, thing that they do up there because they follow that crab from the time it comes in as a peeler until it turns into the real soft crab, and then uh, they pack it and uh, send it on its way. And that's where the crabs that you eat, the soft crabs, that is where they come from. There, there's about a dozen packet houses up there in Saxis, Virginia, and of course, Crisfield, Tangier, Deal Island, all of those places up there. They're all going full bore right now. I'll be back here in a minute with a repeat of our shooting lesson with Lucky McDaniel after these very important messages. Here in the South, we enjoy hush puppies, especially with fish. Well, the folks at House Archery right here in the South have developed a family of hush puppy mixes that make it real easy to prepare wonderful tasting hush puppies. All you do is add water to the mix and spoon them into the deep fat fryer. Easy. There are mixes to satisfy a variety of tastes. If you can't find House Autry Hush Puppy Mix on your grocery shelf, ask for it. Hush Puppies from the folks of House Autry, Newton Grove, North Carolina. In my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina, there's a place called Overton's. Overton's is the world's largest water sports dealer, and this is their 1985 discount catalog. Anything and everything that the boater will need is in this book. Whether it's water skis or life vests, fishing tackles, shotguns, or crossbows, Overton's in Greenville has it at discount prices. Call them today toll free for your new free catalog or stop by when you're in Greenville. The prices and selections are super. Tell them Frank sent you. What's so different about the Happy Jack 3X flea collar? It works. Manufacturers of animal health products for over 38 years, Happy Jack has achieved a dramatic breakthrough in canine preventive health care. The Happy Jack 3X flea collar contains a completely new active ingredient which kills fleas for 11 months, ticks for seven months, and mange mites. Protect your dog and home year round with the Happy Jack 3X collar. Save an expensive trip to the animal clinic and a costly visit from the exterminator. Ask for Happy Jack. <coughs> your dog would. This is my partner here at the Southern Sportsman Restaurant, Bobby Carraway. What you eating? 
Uh, make a shark steak. How about you? Fresh fried eel. Well, you could have had frog legs. Well, you could have had fish imperial. Well, you could have had quail with grits and gravy. And you could have had sweet and sour duck. And you could have had merry old soul. Rabbit supreme. Seafood platter. Stuffed rainbow trout. Ribeye. Fried oysters. Spicy boiled trout. Oyster pie. Fried the menu at the Southern Devil Sportsman fried. is fried worth fried. arguing fried. about. You already said that. Uh, seldom have we ever had more reaction from any story that, that we've done here than the one that we did about a year and a half ago when we went down to Columbus, Georgia and took a shooting lesson with Lucky McDaniel. We're still getting feedbacks. People are still calling. We won't know how to go, get a hold of Lucky. And I'll give you his address. It's just Columbus, Georgia, and the operator will be glad to give you his number. But Lucky teaches instinct shooting. He's known all over the world. He's taught kings and princes and potentates uh, Army generals, he taught John Wayne to shoot, he taught Audie, Audie Murphy. Uh, and he teaches this style of shooting, and particularly he teaches athletes. He goes around and teaches professional basketball teams and football teams uh, and baseball teams because the instinct reaction that you use when you're shooting is applicable to uh, the particular sport that they're playing. Uh, you need the reflexes and everything else in those sports that a shooter needs. So I thought we would go back uh, to a farm across the river from Columbus, Georgia, down in Alabama, with Lucky right now, and take a look at what we showed you here about a year and a half ago. We're going to repeat. Now, he had five students, including myself. We had Debbie Russell, who was with the TV station down there, uh, WLTZ, that carries our program, and the young fellow is Paul Morgan. We also had Donald Crooks and Glenn Haskell. And what he is doing, first of all, the first thing he hands you is not a gun, but a big washer. And he says, look through this washer with both eyes at my nose. And he steps back a few feet, and when he looks back at you in, into that, he can tell you if you're left-eyed or right-eyed, or in my case, if you're what he calls ambidextrous. That is, whether you're neither left-eyed nor right-eyed. And that is the vital piece of information he needs to know to start you shooting. He needs to know whether you're left-eyed or right-eyed. Now, what he does is he teaches you, beginning with this air rifle, to start shooting a big metal disc that's about three and a half or four inches in diameter, and he keeps working down to washers and then to quarters, and finally he's got you down to shooting dimes and pennies in the air as he tosses them up. No sight on the gun. And what he does is, he just keeps on, and this only takes a few minutes. I was absolutely amazed. I told him, I said, look, I'm the kind of a guy that always kills the bird on the second shot. He said, I know your problem exactly. You're bored with the first shot, you're just trying to get rid of it. But he says, I'm gonna teach you how you don't have to get rid of it, you can shoot a bird with it as long as you're pulling the trigger. And he started me off, and I had no idea I could hit this thing flying in the air. And just a little, in just a little while, he had me doing it, I hit it there, and the first time you ever hit it, you hear it ping, and it flips around in the air, and you just can't believe it. And I'm, I don't know whether you notice, I got kind of a stunned look on my face here, but I want to keep going because I don't want to break the spell. And after a while, he's get you hitting it. Now, there's a quarter that I hit, and I said, I don't believe I hit that quarter. But he keeps throwing it up, and he watches you. Uh, this is Marty Rolla, one of his associates that works with him. But Lucky can see the BB when it goes out. Now, when he first started teaching instinct shooting, he started off with a 22 rifle because it was a lot cheaper than shotguns at shooting. But he realized that he couldn't see the bullet coming out. And then he thought of an air rifle. And so what he does is he can watch. He sees the BB going out, and he says, all right, you shot over at that time. You shot under at that time. And with that help and him throwing this thing up, uh, none of these kids have ever done this before. He'll have you shooting a hole out of a washer in just a few minutes. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. We were out there about two hours that morning, the five of us, and he had us all shooting. Now, he teaches you with a shotgun after you get over the, uh, after you've learned to handle the BB gun. Again, you don't pay any attention to sights. You don't pay any attention. You know you got the gun in your hand, but your mind is on the target. You aim for the top of the target. And I've never been able to hit skeets. I always, my excuse was, well, they're not fit to eat anyway. When I'd go out to a skeet range and I'd hit maybe 10 out of a round of uh, 25 or maybe 12 or something like that, 15 if I had a real good day. 
and he was doing the same thing here with Debbie. She had never shot uh, at all. Now what he's doing is they're throwing, he is loading the gun, and after they throw the clay pigeon, he hands me the gun to shoot. Now in a minute what he's going to do is he's going to say, you swing the gun and I'm going to pull the trigger. Uh, I was totally flabbergasted with the way he was doing this. Now see, he's pulling the trigger. All I'm doing now here is I'm aiming the gun and I busted every one of them and to cap the whole climax, they threw five. They've got a, a pigeon machine that throws two of these clay pigeons and Lucky throws three just as fast as he can throw them. He throws one, they throw the other two, and he throws two more. At one time, they're all in the air at once. Now, I missed that one, but I didn't miss many. And twice, I busted all five of them. And uh, to me, that, that was one of the most amazing demonstrations I ever had. This guy said, I'm going to teach you to do this. And I said, no, you can't do it. But he can do it. And uh, I, it's, uh, it's a very exhilarating but also chastening experience to, when you shot your whole life like I have 50 years uh, close to it I've, I've been hunting and all of a sudden I have this guy say I'm gonna make you a better shot and to have him do it and you know uh, that he can do it but he's, he's taught people all over the world and it's an instinct thing and believe me in just a couple of hours uh, he can have you hitting that thing every time he throws it up and I'm talking about dimes and pennies and also those clay pigeons I'll be back here in a minute with a final word after this. In my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina, there's a place called Overton's. Overton's is the world's largest water sports dealer, and this is their 1985 discount catalog. Anything and everything that the boater will need is in this book. Whether it's water skis or life vests, fishing tackles, shotguns, or crossbows, Overton's in Greenville has it at discount prices. Call them today toll free for your new free catalog or stop by when you're in Greenville. The prices and selections are super. Tell them Frank sent you. It's the $50,000 Star Search Junior Championship. A spectacular two hour special with the hottest and youngest new talent in America. Join celebrity host Ed McMahon, guests Nancy Dassault, Tony Danza, Gordon Thompson, and Irene Cara, plus super talented young finalists competing for their share of $50,000. Discover tomorrow's sensations today, the fantastic finals of the $50,000 Star Search Junior Championship. Sunday at 6 during Sports Free Sunday. Understanding in a family is a wonderful thing. Now, Understanding see. helps us see through the eyes of others. Cindy! I get out loud! Your you. family. It's worth the effort. A message from Southern Baptists. Hi, I'm Alan Fawcett, host of the brand new music and comedy series, Putting on the Hits. Some of these talented people up here will be big winners in our lip sync contest, and one of them will go on and win our grand prize of $25,000. Putting on the Hits brings you hits from the past, the present, and the future, all performed in a truly original way. You'll meet our panel of celebrity judges, and I'll be there to keep it all happening for you. So watch us for the show that makes you the star you've always wanted to be, Putting on the Hits. Sunday at 2.30 during Sports Free Sunday. I thought I'd show you my, my broiled crab that I cooked in the oven, and, and uh, that's what he looks like. He's nice and pink there and ready to eat, and as you can see, the stuffing is still in him there, and of course, sure enough, I didn't expect that it would go anywhere. Lucky is just as good. I've got his address here. And it, please don't write me. Please don't call me. Lucky McDaniels in Columbus, Georgia. Now, he is just as good with uh, a pistol as he is with a long gun. He can draw and shoot from the hip and hit anything he wants to with a pistol. Uh, he's just amazing the way he can shoot. He teaches a lot of law enforcement departments, sheriff's departments and things like that. He goes around, travels, and has clinics. And if you get up enough people and want him to come up, uh, he'll come up to wherever you are and put on a clinic for you. That's all the time we have. We'll see you here next week. Please do not litter and do yourself a favor. Take a kid fishing. <laughs>